Good morning. Uh, here you can see on the board that I have written here what governor. The introduction to this was given earlier. Okay. What is governor? So, what governor? This is the simplest one. Though now at present this has become obsolete. This was first used by what? Actually, it was his discovery. And uh, it was uh, used in uh, steam engines. But at present there is no use of this. Because uh, this governor is less sensitive. Okay, this governor cannot be used for high speeds. This governor can be used only for low speeds. Anyway, using this idea, later many scientists discovered many types of governors like uh, Porter governor, Puel governor, Hartwell governor, etc. So many types of governors are available. So since this is the simplest one, so you can get an idea about governor. Okay. So you can see, I have already drawn the sketch. I have already drawn the sketch. Okay, here. So this is the spindle. This is not a straight line, this is like a shaft. Okay, this is actually shaft which is called here governor. This is I have drawn vertically. This one, okay. This is straight line. And uh, these are arms or links. This one, this AO, this one is same. This is also arm or link. Okay, this is sleeve. And this is what? This is stopper. So, and these are balls. Okay. This is ball, this is also ball. Spherical mass is there. And here, for the sake of mathematical simplicity, uh, for one governor, it is assumed that it is assumed that it is assumed that some noise is coming from outside. Okay. Still there will be no problem, I think. Uh, this is the stopper, okay. So here uh, this spindle. This is connected with the engine. When the engine rotates, this is spindle is this is spindle also rotates. Okay. So when spindle rotates, so these balls they will also rotate. And when the speed increases, say speed of the engine increases, therefore what will happen? Speed of the uh, spindle also increases. Okay. So when sp speed of the spindle increases, in that case the balls. Uh, speed of the balls, rotational speed of the balls will also increase. And since rotational speed increases of the balls, so what will happen? Centrifugal force acting in the outward direction, okay, radially outward direction, that is the direction of the centrifugal force. So centrifugal force also increases. If centrifugal force increases, what will happen? There will be lift of the sleeve means there will be upward movement of the sleeve okay so in that case what will happen here from the center of the ball up to this point O point O is what this is the point of intersection of the links okay up to this point O is called height of the governor so when centrifugal force increases this H will decrease because balls will go in the upward direction so in that case H will decrease okay and this is what radius from the spindle axis this is spindle axis up to the center of the ball that distance is called radius radius of what radius of the rotation of ball okay ball is rotating around the spindle so they are in a circular path so the radius of the ball that is denoted by this r this point is denoted by b Center of this ball is denoted by A, this point is denoted by O, and here this point is denoted by C. So, for the sake of mathematical simplicity, what is done? Okay, the weights, weight of this link, weight of this link, these are neglected. Also, sleeve is having some mass, you know this thing, but mass of this sleeve is very, very small as compared to the mass of this ball. So, this Mass is also neglected, actually not mass, that is weight. Since it has some mass, so it has some weight, so this weight is neglected. 
Since this weight is neglected, there will be no tension in the link AC. Okay. In the link AC, there will be no tension since this sleeve is assumed to be weightless. Okay, anyways. So, so what are the forces which are acting on this ball when it is rotating? Uh, forces are one force will be there which will be acting in the outward direction. Okay, I am showing this one. Here also same thing will happen. So that force is centrifugal force denoted by Fc. Okay. Same mass of the ball. Mass of each ball is small m. Therefore, weight will be what? Weight will be m into g. So that weight will be acting in the vertically downward direction. So this line denotes the weight of the ball. And one more thing is there, since the ball is having some weight, therefore some tension will be acting in the upper link. And in the lower link there will be no tension. I have already mentioned that this sleeve is assumed to be weightless and that's why this tension will be neglected. Okay. So only three forces are there. This weight mg, this centrifugal force fc and this t, tension. So under the action of these three forces, the ball is in dynamic equilibrium. For a given speed, for a particular speed, the ball is in dynamic equilibrium. Means it is rotating, but it is at a fixed position. Okay. Okay, fixed position with respect to this height. Okay. Not with respect to the space. Since it is rotating, so it is going, uh, it is moving uh, in space, but this height remains fixed. Anyway, so, so what? So mathematical calculation is so easy for this what governor, not for all the governors. Okay, for what governor mathematical calculation is so easy. So uh, now you assume that this angle, the link makes with the spindle axis is theta. So since this is theta, so this tension can be resolved into two components, one along the vertical, this one, okay, this will be what? This is theta, so this angle is also theta, right? So this component will be T cos theta. And perpendicular to this means in this direction, say this one, okay? So this will be what? T sin theta. So you know that since it is in equilibrium condition, therefore, uh, therefore in the horizontal direction, there will be no net force means net force in the horizontal direction will be zero. So direction of Fc and direction of T sin theta are opposite to each other. Therefore we can easily write T sin theta. This is equal to what? This is equal to Fc. And Fc is equal to what? That is centrifugal force. And we know that Fc is equal to Fc is equal to what? Fc is equal to m omega square r where omega is the angular speed of the ball okay m omega square r so this we have got by using horizontal direction by considering horizontal direction now consider the vertical direction in the vertical direction there are two forces this mg and t cos theta therefore we can write for the vertical direction t cos theta is equal to mg Okay, now say this is equation number 1 and this is equation number 2. Now just you simply divide equation number 1 by equation number 2. So this will give what? If you divide equation number 1 by equation number 2, so what you are getting? T sin theta divided by T cos theta is equal to M omega square R divided by mg. So in the left hand side what we are getting is tan theta. Right? And the right hand side these m's are cancelled. So what we are getting is omega square r by g. Am I right? And uh, what is tan theta? From this geometry this is theta, this distance is r, this distance is h. Therefore tan theta is nothing but r by h. Therefore tan theta can be replaced by r by h which is equal to omega square r by g. 
So from both sides, R's are cancelled. So what we are getting is H is equal to G by omega square. And let me check whether everything is visible or not. Yeah, still everything is visible. There is some portion left in the uh, left hand side. So I am using this sign here. Okay. So R's are cancelled. Therefore, from that line, the next line is H is equal to G by omega square. Now you put the value of G, which is uh, normally taken to be 9.81 meter per second square. This is known to you. So this is equal to 9.81. And if rotational speed is given in terms of RPM, means revolutions per minute. So omega can be replaced by 2 pi n. Okay, this is pi. 2 pi n by 60. Square is there. And if you calculate, just use your calculator to take the value, it will be approximately, not exactly, but approximately 895 by n square. So what is this? This is actually h. So you can see that h is the h is proportional to uh, square. Uh, h is inversely proportional to the square of the RPM. Okay. H is inversely proportional to the square of the RPM. So what can be concluded from here that uh, if A is very large, okay, then H will be very small. So if H is very small, then in that case the governor cannot be used efficiently for the required purpose. So uh, conclusion is that this type of governor can be used only in case of low speeds. For low speeds, in the value of N will be less. In that case, you will get sufficient value of H. Okay. So that H can be used for the required purpose. But for high speeds, if say A is equal to 500 RPM, if you put here 500, then square of 500 is how much? 2, 5 and 4 zeros are there. Okay. So 895 divided by that uh, 2, 5, double zero, double zero, that number is so small. Okay. And if there is little change from, say, the RPM changes from 500 RPM to 550 RPM, so the changes in H will be very small. Okay. You can use your calculator to check the values. But if you use uh, this uh, one governor for low, low speed, such as uh, A is 30 RPM or 40 RPM or 50 RPM, then you will get sufficiently large value of H. And that large value of H can, can be used for the required purpose. Purpose already discussed in the other videos. Okay. I'm not uh, going to repeat the same thing for the same uh, for the same means for the for this video. Okay. Anyway, uh, I think this is over. Okay. Just keep in your mind that this type of governor has become now obsolete. It is of no use at present. Still, to study governor, okay, to study governor, you have to start from this word governor. This will give you an idea about the governor. Okay, then we will uh, proceed to study other governors like Harder governor, Puel governor, Kordar governor, etc. Okay, so I think uh, this will be the end of this video. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. Okay, anyway, one more thing I want to add to this that uh, in all my videos you will see my name, my name is Deepak Shaw and you will get uh, one more name, that name is Shongita Ghandi. She is actually my colleague, uh, actually I should say ex-colleague. Uh, now she is uh, posted at Bombay. Okay, anyway, Mumbai, not Bombay, Mumbai. So, um, so uh, actually she has a lot of contributions in making my videos. I have uh, written few books which are available in Amazon with the help of that lady. Okay, young lady, she's. And uh, I have one blog or website. Everything will be given in the description box of this YouTube video. In all the boxes, the few books will be there which are available in Amazon. Books means uh, those are not hard copies, those are actually ebooks. Okay, you can purchase online. And uh, blogs are, uh, blog is also there. Uh, I'm going to 
I am going to develop one more blog, okay, related to science and engineering. Anyway, everything you will get in my uh, all the videos. Videos means in uh, in the description box of box in the description box of all the videos you will get. Later, I'll show you all the things. Anyway, so show me the Ghati. That name will always appear. That name will always appear in all the videos because she has lots of contributions in making my videos. Okay. Uh, anyway. This is the end of this lecture. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. And uh, one more thing. If you like my videos, please sus subscribe my channel. Okay. And also press the bell icon. So that uh, as soon as I post a new video, you will get immediately the notification of the new video. Thank you once again.